So, in applying this to corporations, can you give some specific examples? The best example I can give is the USG Corporation, which is a very innovative company. They're the creators of drywall. They've come up with ultralight now. They're over 100 years old. They know how to adapt. Uh, they're a company that has done very well and is very resourceful. But they wanted to go through this activity. This and style they, of life? This very style of life thing. And we went through a, a developing a mission statement, which took about eight months because when you do a mission statement for a corporation or any organization for that matter, you want to get everybody in the organization involved in it. So we had people meeting in uh, workshops, two-day workshops from uh, all parts of the company, all kinds of functions, people in all parts of the world. We would have uh, workshops of about 25 people at a time sat up around tables and I gave them assignments to do. But the whole point of this was that- Well, this sounds like fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun and people had a lot of fun and the idea of uh, uh, being able to capture your identity, uh, certainly we know that that's important to us as an individual. When you're working for a company, to be able to do that with the company as well. It's very exciting. So long story short, eight months later, starting with top management, going through the various levels of managing and all functions and people from all geographies in the company, uh, we were able to distill this down to uh, something that really made sense to this company. And we came up with, we are explorers. Life is a far journey. And our hidden goal is readiness to go the distance. Now that was not the mission statement, that was their style of life. That was this style of life. And they came up with a separate mission statement. And the mission statement followed upon that. But we, uh, but we had gone through so many workshops and every workshop ended up with four versions because we had to boil down all of those statements. We did that statistically, came up with all kinds of versions of what are the answers to those questions and what might be a possible mission statement. How would, how, what did they gain from a style of, you, you took this methodology, style of life, it's a non-traditional way of trying to get to the mission statement, which everybody does. What insights did they gain through that process that they might not have otherwise had in trying, in, in a traditional way of coming up with the mission statement? What did, what was their aha in going through that process that they might not have otherwise had? Well, we worked on uncovering values of the corporation. We worked on, uh, we, we had all kinds of tools. We asked, uh, well, first of all, a, a workshop was made up of about four tables of six or eight people. And we moved people around during the day. And uh, so we put them through all kinds of exercises. But at the end of the workshop, we wanted each table to come up with their I am, or we are, life is, our our central goal. So we ended up with a multiplicity of answers to those questions. And there was a group at the end where we put uh, people together that had to sort this out so that we would classify uh, the various options and the various views and, and interpretations of what life in this corporation is about and the answers to those three questions. Well, you know, it's interesting because in, in sitting through these mission statement creation sessions, a lot of times we're not honest with ourselves. We have this per persona that we project of our company in our corporation that may not be the truth. Does this get at the truth faster and, you know, where we're weak, where, what we really value? Well, as you begin to boil these things down and you get to fewer and fewer options and you get to where you're pretty close to what it might be, all along the way people are saying, well, that's us, that's not us, oh, that is really us. And that is something we've never admitted, or this is right. what we're really good at, and this is our choice uh, action and our choice skills and abilities and interests and competencies. All of those things begin to come to the surface, and so when different interpretations are tried, they're pretty easily rejected or accepted based on the fact that, oh yeah, that fits, that's who we right. are. Because so sometimes we, we do it we, in the way the world We'd like the world to perceive us, not the way the world really does perceive us. And my sense is that kind of forces it through what, who we really are. Well, it, it's true. And of course, 
we all know what the experience is and when we hear something that we really respond to and say, yeah, that's it, right. that's it. There's a locking in. Thank you.